Today, a primer on Bluetooth Smart and Ant Plus for consumers. So why a primer video on this? Well, this is my first one on this topic, but it definitely won't be the last. Today we'll cover, I guess, an overview of these two technologies, how they connect, how they work, and how to troubleshoot a few connection problems which we've all had, and simply turning things off and turning things back on and fixed it. This will go into more depth on that and why that probably worked, and how you can troubleshoot things a lot quicker in the near future by understanding how these technologies connect together. So as an example of how many devices are out there these days talking Ant Plus and Bluetooth LE Smart 4.0, here's what I have with me here in Sydney today. So Ant Plus, Ant Plus, Ant Plus, Ant Plus and Bluetooth, Ant Plus Bluetooth, Garmin 820, Garmin 820, so they're both Bluetooth and Ant Plus, Reflect, Polar Bluetooth Smart, uh, Foot Pod for running, Garmin 800, Wahoo Element, um, and my iPad along with the iPhone that I have in my pocket, and also uh, I have a speed and cadence sensor on one of my bikes, and the two power meters on the bikes, plus my laptop in front. So that might seem a lot, but this number will definitely grow. I can guarantee you that next year, there's gonna be even more. So onto the definitions of what I'll be talking about today. Ant Plus, let's just call it Ant Plus, and Bluetooth. Well, that comes under many names. The Bluetooth 4.0 specification encompasses Bluetooth Smart, which is also known as Bluetooth LE, low energy, um, which is also shortened down to BLE or BTLE. Uh, the 4.0 spec also covers the traditional classic Bluetooth. We won't go into that. Today we're talking about Bluetooth Smart of the 4.0 specification. Side note, 4.1, 4.2 and 5 cover a few of these issues and address a few of the limitations I'll be talking about today. We'll cover those in other videos. So this video will be primarily discussing the differences between the Ant Plus topology and the Bluetooth Smart topology that is generally implemented with sports technology using 4.0. Starting off very basically with Ant, we will say we've got a power meter here with an ID of 66. We'll have a heart rate monitor here with an ID of 100. And we can have a cadence sensor over here with an ID of 222. Three Ant slave devices, which we connect a head unit to Ant Plus, so that could be a Garmin, or a Garmin, or an Element, or another Garmin, all will work. That device there then pairs to all three, and you have the data for all three here. Quite simple. Let's just say your coach is on the sidelines, or beside you, or riding beside you, also has an Ant device. They can also search and pair to these devices and read your info, one, two, three. It doesn't really matter. And let's just say some evil character over here also has a device, does a search, three devices show up, one, two, three. They can also read, as long as they're in range, Ant Plus doesn't really care. These don't really care who's listening. They'll just transmit their information. Quite simple, quite straightforward. Let's go through an example of that right now in the real world. So I've just paired my heart rate strap via Ant Plus to these two Garmin devices, Garmin 820 here, Garmin 800 here. And you can see they're both reading. So the Ant Plus acting as more of a broadcast type connectivity, it's working just fine. So Bluetooth Smart's a connection oriented topology. Let me show you what that means when it comes to the same scenario as we had before. So we had three devices. We had a power meter here with ID of 66. We had a heart rate monitor with an ID of 100. And we had a cadence sensor over here as an example with an ID of 222. Two, two. Bluetooth sets up what's called a PicoNet, a one-to-one -one connection as a master between multiple slaves. What that means is you have a Bluetooth head unit over here that will scan for all devices and then make a connection to each one. Happy days. Very, very similar. One, two, three connections made there. Once the connection to any of these devices is made, these slave devices go from an advertising state into a connected state. What that means is if you have another device over here or here, 
searching for other Bluetooth devices, they will not see any of these devices. Once in connected state, these no longer advertised as available connection. So if you're ever on your phone trying to search for a device or search for connectivity to something and something already holds one of these connections open, such as another application in the background or a computer, you will never see these devices. That's the big gotcha and probably the number one takeaway from this video today. Oh, and another gotcha with Bluetooth as well compared to Ant is the device IDs may be in hexadecimal, which means that 66 will be 42, 100 will be 64, and 222 will be DE. Just to be a little confusing. Don't worry too much about that though. So now I'll give you an example of what it means when these devices go from an advertising state to a connected state, and you can't scan for these things. This is probably the situation most of us have been in when trying to connect things. So the Tax Neo, another Bluetooth device. We actually have status lights through here. So we have Bluetooth, we have AMP Plus connectivity, and we have power on the Tax Neo. This is perfect for me to show you what happens when we search for these devices. So what we can see here is both of these, both of these master devices here are searching for slaves in the environment. What they've found is the Neo, and none of them have made a connection to it yet. Let's make a connection to the Neo now. You can see the Bluetooth connectivity has been made to the iPad and it's disappeared from the iPhone. Take note that I actually haven't saved the sensor or made any official connection to it yet. It's just sort of viewing the data from it. That means the connection establishment has been made from the Neo to here and it's effectively gone from everywhere else. Cannot be seen. So once we get back out of here and drop off the connectivity between the iPad and the Neo, still didn't help. That connection is still being held open. Okay, let's close this app. And there we go. So what you've just seen there are some of the problems that occur when you're trying to pair some Bluetooth devices between devices or switch devices. You can get into strife. Switching Bluetooth off and back on typically helps as well, or rebooting everything. So again, opening here, scanning for sensors. The Neo is in advertisement mode, so it will show up in both. I'll make the connection this time with the iPhone. It should then drop off here. We've made the one-to-one -one connection here, and it drops off from here. This thing can no longer see the Tax Neo. We cancel that. Ha, huh, straight away, it dropped the connection between these two. The Neo went back into advertisement mode and can see both devices. So in summary, the majority of sporting equipment out there at the moment, which is using Bluetooth Smart 4.0, operates like that. It's a one-to-one -one connectivity, and once the connection is made, they go out of advertisement mode and nothing else can see them. It's a big gotcha in a shared environment. If you're in a spin studio with, let's just say, 10 kickers and multiple Bluetooth heart rate straps, you can see the trouble you can get in. If somebody is uh, trying to connect to the wrong one, you just won't see it. Ant Plus doesn't really care who's listening. It'll just send out its data packets and multiple head units can pick those up if they're in range. With Bluetooth being connection oriented, it's a little tricky to get up and running for the first time. So that explains the differences between Ant Plus and Bluetooth LE. In the version that we're dealing with mostly, which is 4.0, if you've had any problems that may explain what's been going on, but in short, turn it off, turn it back on again, let me know how you go. Okay, thanks for watching.